Now that the HDR images are merged together, it's time to create the panoramic photo. I've gone back to Bridge and navigated to the results. You'll note Photomatic shows you the combined images and renames them with the original source files. So this was HDR Pano created from images 1, 2, and 3 to that single merged file. As I look through here, I see plenty of overlap. So let's invoke the photo merge command. I've got them all selected so I could simply choose Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. This will send the images over to Photoshop and load them in the Photo Merge dialog. Make sure you choose the choice to blend the images together. And while you're at it, invoke geometric distortion and any vignette removal. Although in this case, I should be able to say no to that since I did that in the developing of the raw files. Use the auto method unless you feel strongly that the perspective method would be useful because of a strong center point. I generally reserve this one for architectural photos. When you're ready, click OK and Photoshop will load all of the images and combine them together. The HDR merge is complete and it looks pretty good. Notice I really have very little distortion in this panorama because we were shooting quite wide. This means that the geometric correction was able to fix the horizon line for us and it feels pretty good. As I look at the image though, I do see a few distractions that we're going to pull out and that's the wires here and across the board a few other enhancements to color correction. But the merge was complete so let's go ahead and just flatten this image, layer, flatten image, and once that's complete we can move on to a few additional finishing techniques. These telephone wires or power lines are a bit distracting. We can try using the spot healing brush tool. Now I'm a big fan of making a new empty layer and telling the tool to sample all layers. Now if you draw over that line, you'll notice it samples from around. And it should try to fill that in. It did pretty well. I can brush over that area a little bit. And now that I got that, I'll just click here once hold down the shift key to draw a straight line. And when I let go, it analyzes the surrounding pixels and should attempt to blend. Not too bad. Now, you'll note in some cases it's not perfect and that's where tools like the clone stamp tool can also come in handy. Remember, in the cloud texture here, just take advantage of current and below layers and now it's very easy to sample in and just paint over. Remember, because you're cloning to an empty layer, it's easy to toggle that on and off and evaluate. So if you decide that it wasn't quite right, it's pretty easy to fix. All right, we've gotten that line in there again, so I'm just going to select it. Using that empty layer, take advantage of the spot healing brush. Click and paint over that line. And let it evaluate and try to remove. Now, you'll note in the smaller details here that we do have a couple of poles standing up. So it's up to you to decide if you want to keep that in or how much you're going to take out. I'm just going to do the quick basics here on this. But remember, you can continue to work and refine that at any magnification level until it feels like you've really gotten it perfect. Now, this top part here, as I look at the photo, I don't find this area as interesting. But we'll zoom in and remove the distraction. Again, this is the sort of thing where you could spend three minutes or 20 minutes doing it. So I'm just showing you the essential adjustments. But as we paint over those areas, it will attempt to surround the pixels and take them out. Not too bad there. Paint over and release. And because this is on its own layer, this is nice and easy to control. Remember, if you do too far, you could just erase. That didn't work quite as well as I would have liked, so let's go with a smaller brush, option click, and paint that out. Taking a little bit of a pass from the left. Extend that in just a little bit. That worked pretty well. Let's take this up just a little. Let those two meet. And across the side here, we'll just line that up and start to blend. Now remember, sometimes you will see seams. So it may be necessary that you do a little bit of blending or consider just lowering the opacity of the brush so that as you blend those together, you can get the two values coming in. 
And by cloning at a lower opacity there, and from going from both sides, it's easier to create a smoother transition. I'll get a nice big brush now and just clone at a low opacity and mix those together. All right, let's get rid of a little bit of stray pixel there. Build that in. And it's working okay. Now to finish this, as I look at the image, it's clear that the sky is a lot more interesting on this side of the tree. And the HDR merging did a slightly different job. So let's grab the crop tool and just really target this here to that best area. I'll clear out the limits on the crop tool and set it to a custom crop. We're essentially going from one tree to the next tree. Feels pretty good. I'll press return without the delete crop pixel option selected and it will crop that image and size it down. Keep in mind, this is a very large image, so it may take a bit as you work on that. With the crop tool reselected here, I'm just gonna pull a little bit more off of the top to remove some of the stray pixels. Looks pretty good. To finish this out, let's just add a few adjustments. We'll jump over into the adjustments panel and add a curves adjustment, and then option or alt click on the word auto. This will make it very easy to go in and start to fix the contrast in the image or enhance the brightness in the darks. I like doing this with snap midtones, and that really brought out the clouds. Once that's done, let's toss on a photo filter in this case and use the cooling filter option. That really brings out the blues, but it's a little too much. I'm gonna click on the mask here, grab my gradient tool, and just do a simple black to white blend. You see that that creates a transition on the gradient that limits it. So in this case, it's not applied as much to the bottom of the image. That makes it really simple if you'd like to do a gradual blend in the image to limit the adjustment. Feels pretty good. Let's just toss on a lookup table and grab one of our film stock presets just to boost the colors. Remember, you got lots of options here. So find one that works well for you. We'll drop that below the adjustment layer for curves and re-invoke the auto to remove any color cast. Option clicking on the word auto will do that, making it simple. While you're here, feel free to use the on image tool to pull down any areas you feel need a little bit of a boost. There we go. And when that's all done, just decide if you need any more color or boosting but I'm happy with that image. It was a very cloudy day, and I like how that's coming together. So let's just take a little bit of a look at that. We've now captured the dynamic range of that landscape much better than the original files. Now that you've got the techniques down, feel free to experiment and combine this on some of your future work.